Good morning. It's good to see each one of you. I know many of us had um, a choice to be here or not, to hit the snooze button, to perhaps turn off the alarm. I'm so glad you're here. And can I just tell you that I was in the back praying for you and praying for me um, just a few moments ago that God would speak to your heart. Because now more than ever, I believe you and I need to have that solid, firm foundation, which is Christ. That's the only one that's going to last. Boy, the world is changing, changing, changing. Aren't you glad that Christ does not? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need him more than ever. I'm glad you're here. If you did not fill out a communication card and place that in the offering plate, you can simply do that. And you can place that in the bowl at the conclusion of our service. We want to know you. We want to encourage you in your relationship with Christ, no matter where you are in proximity to him. And his grace is enough for you. So if you have a prayer request, you can write that down and you can place that in the bowl. And we have a digital prayer wall that we love people to go to, to be praying for these prayer requests because prayer is powerful and effective. I am wound up, I guess. I had coffee early this morning and I still lost sleep, still went to bed late, but I'm just fired up about what we're going to talk about today. We are in the middle of a sermon series and cleverly <laughs> entitled Sermon on the Mount. It's just not that um, 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 clever at all as far as that is um, because that's what it is. It's Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the greatest sermon ever preached, preached by Jesus himself. And as you read through Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it's very easy to pick up that Jesus flipped the script of what was traditional thinking and mindset at that time. And he brought this new, incredible teaching to, to depths that um, are impacting lives today um, all around the world. Last week, we talked about prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Today, we're talking about something different. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, but I'm going to read all the way through verse 24. But I have a question for you, and here it is on the screen. What would you say is the greatest investment you have ever made? Ponder that question for a moment, and think about it. Only you can answer that. What would be the greatest investment you have ever made? Here's a different way of asking maybe that question and going a little bit deeper. What would others say, other people that know you and know you well, is your treasure? What is some of your greatest treasure in life? What would people say that really know you? What would they say about you? See, the sermon in the sentence or the big idea of today is this next slide. When it comes to investments, there's no greater investment that you and I can make than investing in kingdom work. Once again, when it comes to investments, there's no greater investment that you and I can make than investing in God's work, in his kingdom. The Bible has a lot to say about giving. Listen to this. 500 verses are in the Bible in regards to prayer. How many verses in the Bible do you think speak to money? Think it's less? Think it's more? 2,300 verses in the Bible have to deal with money. That's a big deal, my friends. That is a big deal. Giving is spiritual is something I would really like to say about giving. Why? Because Jesus himself said in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I didn't really understand that as a child. I, I couldn't wait for Christmas morning. I would go out there the night before. I would like shake the presents, try to figure out how, what it was. And then I would go out there first thing and I just would want to rip it apart because I was all about getting. Finally, I'm finally growing up. I know some of you are so thankful for that. And I'm learning more and more, it is more blessed to give than receive. I would rather give a gift that means something to the recipient than get one any day of the week. Today, we're in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Jesus said, 
Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is out of the New American Standard Version. This is the version I learned it. Um, I actually have the New International Version in front of me. But I would encourage you to write this down, these three verses, and put it on an index card. My wife does this and puts this on the mirror of uh, my, our boys and in, on the mirror in the bathroom, um, in our bathroom. But to keep that in front of us, do not store up for yourselves treasures here on earth where rot, moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. See, Jesus reminds us of a couple things in this passage. First of all, he reminds us that earthly treasure is temporary. I looked up the other day about the stock market. Um, my dad and I talked Friday, we had lunch, and he talked about how he's taken a hit and how much of a hit he took through um, the course of these changes of the last several weeks and time. Listen to this, the stock market dropped 10% one day, bounced nearly 1,300 points later, then it was down 600 points, like that, just in a couple days. Earthly treasure is temporary. You and I know that. Treasures can be stolen. A friend of mine, a youth minister here in town, got, had his truck stolen from his driveway just the other day. Treasures, rust and decay. I remember, I was 16 years old when I got my first car. I was so incredibly excited. My dad bought it for $1,000. It did not look like much, but man, it was fast, I think. Not that I drove it fast. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. It didn't look like much. I'd been working since I was 14 years old. I saved up money because I wanted to invest in this car. So I had a beautiful paint job. Um, um, done to this car. It was a 71 Camaro and I had a black, I had it painted black with silver um, micro fleck in the paint. I think that's how you call it. And it just, it was beautiful until I was in a wreck and my car was totaled. You see, earthly treasure is sometimes very temporary, my friends. You know this. I know this to be true. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, this, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And then he went on to tell this parable, this story <clears throat> about a guy that had an incredible harvest. And it was so big <clears throat> that he had to take, he wanted to take down his barns and he wanted to build bigger ones because the, the Bible says that he wanted to Take it easy. He wanted to eat, drink, and be merry. And the next thing Jesus says is, God says, you fool. This very night, your life will be taken from you. And I see so often we invest in things that are temporary. Every day is a gift, my friends. You know this, I know this. We're not promised tomorrow, none of us. And I want you to know right now, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Man, we have got to have a firm foundation. Earthly treasure is temporary. May we invest in the things that will last and make a difference. The religious leaders of Jesus' day did not get this. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and money. And the Pharisees, it says right there in the passage, they heard this and they sneered. <clears throat> they sneered at Jesus because they loved money. See, if our heart loves material things and puts earthly gain above heavenly investments, we will lose. Jesus gives two powerful illustrations to illustrate the key verse, which is verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Verses 22 and 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. 
If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. <clears throat> Ancient Greeks believed the eyes were the window to the, to the heart and to the soul. But just like them, if our focus is on material gain, it will mean darkness within. But if our focus is to serve and glorify God with all that he blesses us with, then there will be light within. The reality is we can't look in two directions at the same time. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You know this, I know this. We can't serve two masters. Either Jesus is Lord or money is. I want to say this, it's not bad to have money. I've known lots of wonderful Christian people that believed with all their heart um, it is more blessed to give than receive and believe that they were blessed by God to be a blessing to others. It's not bad to have money, but it's bad if money has you. Ask yourself today, what are you devoted to? What are you devoted to? I want to give you a few biblical examples of some some people that really understood that, and they um, were blessed financially. Abraham, the pillar of faith in the early part of Genesis, had 318 people on his paid staff, and yet he still kept God number one. How about Joseph, the guy who appears in the latter part of the book of Genesis, perhaps the second richest per, uh, person in the world at one time? And yet, he had a heart for God, and he had such a heart to keep his integrity in intact. How about this guy? Solomon, David's son. This guy was rich beyond our imagination and wise beyond compare. And you know what he said in Ecclesiastes? You know this. Everything is what? Meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. I'd like to to challenge you, to challenge myself, for each one of us to be challenged to cultivate a life of generosity with all that God gives you and gives us. To use the money God allows you to hold for a while because it's temporary. Believe it's very temporary. I have two kids. It's very temporary. It goes quick. But there's no greater investment that you and I can make than investing in kingdom work. See, Jesus reminds us that earthly treasure is temporary. But Jesus reminds us that heavenly investments are eternal. Verse 20, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. I have a question for you. What is kingdom treasure? What is kingdom treasure? Well, in a kingdom, the king determines what is valuable, right? So ask yourself, what does Jesus value? What is near and dear to the heart of Christ? What does he love? I came up with a few. We could probably add to this list. Jesus values people. He values others. I read a couple parables even this morning. He would be the one to leave the 99 that were safe and secure to find the one that was lost. When it comes to coins, he would be the one that would diligently search for the one that was missing while still having the nine he had. People matter to Christ. We can read that in the Gospels. We can see how he touched those who many would consider unclean how he spoke to, how he was considerate of those that live such a sinful life. We know this. What else does Jesus value? How about this? Serving. I thought of John chapter 13 and Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And it's about verse 15 and he says, now that I have done this for you, I've set an example. You should go do as I have done for you. And how about this? Jesus treasures sacrifice. 
And I think that goes far beyond our, our finances, but living sacrificially. See, here are a couple things about investments and about investing in, in kingdom work. Heavenly invest in, investments cannot be taken away. They can't. You and I have heard, you can't take it with you, but I'm here to tell you, we can send it on ahead. We have for years supported missions and we believe wholeheartedly in missions and the mission field and the ministry and the mission field exists not only down the street but around the globe. I think of all the short-term mission trips we've done in Oklahoma City, in Dallas, in Guatemala and other places that we've planted churches. We believe in missions and we could send it on ahead. See, Jesus says in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What you and I invest in, we take interest in. Our hearts follow our treasure. It all belongs to God. You and I know this. Here's a passage from the Old Testament and a passage in the New Testament. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. God loves a cheerful giver. If you want to grow spiritually, one of the most spiritual disciplines you and I can cultivate in our life is in the act of giving. I believe that. For years with the teenagers, we did a sermon series about every other year entitled Habits, Creating a Habit, Developing a Habit that could change your life, that could make a huge impact in your life. It was alliterated H-A-B-I-T. H was hang time with God, cultivating a quiet time. Cultivating a time that you set aside in your day to open up his word and let the word of God open you up and me up. And can I just say some of the things I've told the teenagers over the years that sometimes it's not so much quantity as it is quality. My encouragement in that is sometimes you might have five minutes. You might have 10 minutes, but in five minutes a day, you can read through the whole New Testament, entire New Testament in a year, five minutes a day. Creating that time. A was accountability with another believer. This is the concept in which we started discipleship groups. And we had groups that would meet and small groups today that even hold one another accountable. But you and I need accountability in our life. We need to be held accountable for our commitments to Christ, for um, the commitments we make in life. B is Bible memorization. And... I'm encouraging people, I'm encouraging people of all ages to hide God's word in your heart this year. The passage is the one we just read, um, Matthew 6, 19, 20, and 21. But to memorize and meditate on God's word. Bible memorization. I is involvement with the church body. I have a lot of dreams for church. And one of the dreams I have and God has not let me let go of this, is I love all ages, and I believe it is possible for a 16-year-old and a 60-year-old to worship, worship together in the same room. I believe that with all my heart. Now, do some people like certain songs, and do other people like other songs that might sound a little bit different? Absolutely. But can we all not come together as a family and, and, and be involved in the church body together? I believe we can. T was tithing. I think it's important even as a young person would develop that, um, that characteristic of a giving generous heart because we can't take it with us but we can send it on ahead. See, I want to challenge you, I want to challenge myself continually to be a sacrificial giver. And I want to encourage you to pray that the Lord would lead you to do what he would want you to do. For some, whenever it talks about giving and finances, I know that's a big step of faith. 
And what might look like sacrificial giving to one is going to look totally different for another. But I want to encourage you to seek the Lord on this and do what he would have you do. I want to speak really practically about the church as a whole when it comes to our finances, because I want you to, to know, and I'm a very transparent individual, You'll, um, if you know me, you know that's true. And so when it comes to our finances, I, I want you to know several things. First of all, we want to be totally transparent and accountable when it comes to our finances here at the church. Here at the church, we have two signers on every check that is issued because we want to be accountable. We think that's very important. We have two people counting the offering, never just one person. That's important. I've heard horror stories, I'm sure you have too, about people that have taken advantage of that situation. We don't want to do that. We want to be incredibly accountable. As a matter of fact, I feel uncomfortable on Wednesday nights because Wednesday night we have a family meal and there's a offering, there's a donation jar set up. Our goal is just to break even, but that is handed to me. It's very rarely over $100, but I always ask somebody to walk with me with that Ziploc bag of money over to the finance office to put it in there because I don't want anybody to have a perception other than reality. Friends, that's accountability. And I think that's important. I think that's so important. Here is one of um, our goals that we've talked about um, in leadership. We would love one day to be out from under this mortgage payment and to be and have the church building completely paid off. If I'm correct, and I talked with um, a couple people on our finance team, that this building and the South building and all that we have, the buildings here, um, appraised for about $1.5 million. So that's pretty cool. But I think what's even cooler is what we owe on said buildings. $226,000 is all we owe. And friends, I've, um, <laughs> one of our families that have been here for a little while, that was the first question he asked, is how much debt do we have on this, um, on our buildings? Guys, I, personally speaking, I know my wife and I've talked about this, I don't want to be married to a mortgage payment. And wouldn't it be cool to one day have this building paid off? We pay in mortgage, um, um, if I'm correct, I, and I think I'm pretty close, $3,100 a month. $3,100 a month on mortgage for this. Can I just ask you, what could we do with $3,100 that we weren't paying for mortgage? We could do a lot. We could do a lot. That is um, a dream we have. We might talk more about that at a later date, but I'm just throwing that out there, planting the seed in your mind. I wanted you all to know, um, as far as paying it forward, put it, investing in heavenly kingdom treasure, all these missionaries that we support. Because I think it's good for you to be informed on this. Benevolence is, um, it literally means kindness, and that's for um, people within our church family that need um, support. Maybe it's um, with helping out with a particular bill or something like that. We want to do that. Um, that's our benevolence ministry. Compassionate Hands. Many of you know about Compassionate Hands. It's a wonderful ministry in town that exists, um, and the different um, churches support Compassionate Hands, and they help on a citywide level, what I just mentioned about benevolence, and it's a wonderful ministry. Manna Pantry. We, we have sent teams over there to help stock food in the pantry, and it is used all the time for people that might need um, to fill um, um, their pantry. It's a great blessing. Christ Closet is a wonderful ministry that's been going on some time, and we, it, it, it is open the first Saturday of every month from 11 to 2. We, we had it open yesterday, and I think there were, some, there were close to 40 families in the community that, that came to Christ Closet, and they have an opportunity to come to, to pick out clothes that are free. It's overwhelming. The, the, the amount of response people that have, people have given clothes to Christ's closet. I think, and they've said this too, they don't want to give it to goodwill to be sold. They want to give it to be given away. And I'm proud of that fact. We give people clothes, we feed them for free, and we get a chance to pray with them and build relationships with them. That's the ministry of Christ's closet. By the way, 
We are looking to expand that ministry. We are looking to purchase um, a storage unit, like a 40-foot storage unit, and to place it um, on our facility over by the South Building um, so we can expand um, that ministry. Cooks and Hills is an incredible ministry that exists to reach out to those kids that are at risk. And um, it's, it, they t give them, provide them a home, provide them shelter, and even therapy as needed. That's Cooks and Hills. Here are a couple of our missionaries, John Philippos in India, Paul Wilson in the Philippines, and let me just explain that for a moment. Paul and Mary Wilson have actually retired from being full-time missionaries, but they're part-time missionaries, and they still go, go do training and all sorts of things in the Philippines. So we've actually multiplied that um, offering, if you will, and so half of it's going to Mor Morning Glory Christian School in Guatemala. We've been down in Guatemala twice now as a church, and we are supporting Morning Glory Christian School um, every month, and I'm proud of that. Jerry Thaprom in Thailand and Burma. The Children's Justice Center, I, I don't have a great handle on how the present um, state is of that ministry, but I know Charlie and Todd and Brett and, and there might be others are faithful about going out there every Sunday and providing an opportunity where kids can come to church. They're not forced, but they can come to church and they can be loved on and encouraged and, um, and hear about Christ. This last one is 15 churches. In 2002, we began um, building churches in third world countries. And our goal was to build a church in a third world country every year for 15 years. And that was completed in 2016. But a portion of the offering still goes for that. And at the end of the year, we are allowed the opportunity to be a blessing to a ministry. See, you all need to know this stuff. And I am proud of the fact that we support such great mission projects and missionaries. And 10%, a tithe of everything that is given, goes towards missions. I'm proud of that. I think a goal for you and I to have is to thank God and bless others in the good times and trust Him in the tough times. Isn't that faith? Job is a perfect example. He had it all, if you've read his story, and he lost it all. In the middle of a devastating moment in his life, when his body was afflicted with disease, his wife said to him, and this occurs in chapter 2 of Job, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. And... I would not recommend this to any husband to say to his wife, but he said, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? That's faith, my friends. In the good times, in the tough times, that to having this unshakable faith that God is in control. Jehovah Jireh, we mentioned, Yaira, we mentioned about this last week, literally means my provider, and God will provide for you and for me. Let's make it a goal now, individually and corporately, to send it on ahead. Earthly treasure is temporary, but heavenly investments last. Will you stand with me, please? One of my favorite bands, Christian bands, is Casting Crowns. I, I listen to them often. And a song that I listen to quite often of their songs is called Only Jesus. And it kind of reminds you of what's truly important. Here's a phrase from this song. All the kingdoms built, all the trophies won, will crumble into dust when it's said and done. Because all that really mattered, did I live the truth to the ones I love, was my life the proof that there's only one whose name will last forever? I have um, Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 8, written on this piece of paper, and it says, The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of God endures forever. This too will pass, my friends. What's done for Christ will last. What are you banking on today? I'm banking on that. I'm banking on that. See, one more time. 
this slide, when it comes to investments, there is no greater investment that you and I can make than investing in kingdom work. So I think a question for you and I to personalize today is what do you sense God leading you to do because of what you've heard today? You hear stories. We watch the news of people maybe amassing this treasure here on earth. And a phrase I heard a long time ago, I've never once seen a hearse with a U-Haul behind it because we can't take it with us. May we pay it forward and press it on because our heavenly investments last. Today, maybe is a little bit of a gut check time about your priorities and your commitments. Only you know them, maybe those who know you best, but God certainly does. So maybe to look inside yourself and just say, God, what would you have me do? Stir me, move me, motivate me to do what you want me to do. And I'll tell you something that I shared with students for years. I would never ever ask anybody to do something I wasn't 